In this video, we will show how to choose the current limiting resistor value for a circuit with multiple LEDs in series. In videos earlier in this playlist, we show how to do this calculation for a circuit with a single LED and for a circuit with multiple LEDs in parallel. We also talk about power and efficiency in those circuits. You might want to watch those before you watch this one. You can find all of them linked in the description of this video. If you did watch those videos, you might remember that the equation to solve for the resistor value in a circuit with a single LED is that R equals the battery voltage minus the forward voltage drop over the LED, all divided by the desired current through the LED. The only difference here is that we have combined multiple LEDs in parallel, sorry, in series, so we need to add up the voltage drop across each of these individual LEDs because voltages add in series. So we are just going to throw a summation symbol into this equation. So the value for this single current limiting resistor is going to be the battery voltage minus the sum of all of the LED voltages divided by the LED current. Since all of these LEDs are in series, the current through each one of them is going to be the same. So we only have one current there, whereas depending on the LED color, we might have different voltage drops across the LEDs. For our example, we are going to say that we have known values of a battery voltage of 12 volts. This is common, for example, for many wall adapter power supplies, so it might not necessarily literally be a battery. And we have some LED forward voltage drops, which you can look up in the LED's data sheet of two volts, which usually corresponds to a red LED, four volts for a blue LED, and three volts, which is going to be some color in between, like maybe green or yellow, and a desired current of 20 milliamps through each of the LEDs. That's something to note about one of the disadvantages for this circuit configuration. If for some reason you have LEDs that have different rated currents, 20 milliamps is a very common value, but sometimes you will get LEDs that are rated at a higher current like 30 or 40 milliamps. Then since they are in series here, you are going to have the same current through all of them. So your higher current LED might have a lower current through it, or depending on how you choose the resistor, your lower current rated LEDs might have a higher current, which can risk burning them out. So if you do need different currents through your LEDs, then you might actually be better off with the parallel circuit configuration, which we cover in the video before this one in the playlist. Again, link down there in the description. But assuming your LED currents are all the same, you can go ahead and plug numbers into this equation to solve for that resistor value. So R equals the battery voltage, which is 12 volts, minus the sum of all the LED voltages. So we have two volts plus three volts plus four volts divided by the desired current of 20 milliamps or 0.02 amps. That is going to give a resistor value of 150 ohms. As we covered in previous videos, you also need to double check and make sure you are not exceeding the power rating of your resistor. Many common resistors are rated at one quarter watt, although you can buy power resistors with higher ratings than that. These are usually the most common in hobbyist applications. So we can do that by using the equation P equals IV, or you can substitute Ohm's law, which is V equals IR into that equation. So for a resistor, you can also calculate the power as P equals I squared R or V squared over R. So depending on which variables you have handy, you can use different versions of that equation to calculate the power, but they will all give you the same thing. In this case, I'm gonna use the I squared R version. So I have 0.02 amps squared times the resistor value of 150 ohms. That gives a power of 0.06 watts or 60 milliwatts, which is safely below our limit. Sorry, I kind of ran out of space there of 250 milliwatts or a quarter watt. So in this case for the circuit design, as long as you have a 150 ohm resistor on hand, you are okay because you are below the power rating for that resistor. If you don't have a 150 ohm resistor on hand, then you have two options. One is really a topic for another video, so I'm not going to cover it here, but you can combine individual resistors in series, in parallel, or in a combination of series and parallel to create different resistance values to get the exact value you want. Again, we're not gonna cover that here, 
Another simpler solution is just to go up to the next biggest size resistor you have available. Many resistor kits come with resistors in a range of sizes, but they're only available in certain values. So just for the sake of this example, let's say that we don't actually have a 150 ohm resistor available, but we have a 220 ohm resistor, which is a common size. Then we can rearrange this equation to solve for the actual current if we have a known resistor value. So we're gonna do that by flipping the equation around to say the current is equal to the battery voltage minus the sum of the LED voltages divided by the resistance. So again, we can now plug in our numbers where we have our new known resistance of 220 ohms and our current is unknown. That's gonna be 12 volts minus the sum of the LED voltages, two volts plus three volts plus four volts, all divided by our new resistor value of 220 ohms and that's gonna give a current of 0.0136 amps or 13.6 milliamps. So you would have to physically build the circuit and take a look at the LEDs and see if their brightness is still good enough for your application. Maybe this doesn't actually matter, but if this current is getting a little too low and the corresponding brightness of the LEDs is not bright enough, then you might actually need to do something else like this process of combining resistors to get a value closer to your target value, which is gonna bring the current through the LEDs back up. Finally, as we covered in more detail in some previous videos, but I'll go over it quickly here, you might want to calculate the power or efficiency of your circuit. So the power generated by or supplied by the battery is the current, which is again the same here because all of these parts are in series, times the voltage of the battery. The power dissipated by the resistor is also equal to voltage times current, but you can substitute Ohm's law into that equation to write it in different forms for a resistor. Again, cover that up there, so that equals I squared R equals V squared over R. And the LEDs, Ohm's law does not apply to LEDs, so you can't use these forms of the equation for the LEDs, but again, you can calculate the power dissipated by each LED by multiplying the current times the voltage of that LED. You know, due to conservation of energy, that the sum of the power dissipated by the resistors and the LEDs has to equal the power supplied by the battery. So since we only have one resistor here, that's gonna be the power of the resistor plus the sum of the power of the individual LEDs. You can calculate the percent of power from the battery that is dissipated by the resistor by dividing that resistor power by, oops, that should be a P. Excuse my bad handwriting there. Give me a second to erase that. Dividing the resistor power by the battery power, and you can calculate the overall efficiency of the circuit or how much of the electrical power from the battery is actually converted to light by the LEDs by dividing the power of all of the LEDs by the power from the battery, but with an additional additional efficiency factor in there because LEDs are not 100% efficient. They also dissipate some heat. They don't convert 100% of the input electrical energy into light. So that factor can be kind of hard to find. You might be able to find it in your LEDs data sheet. You might not. I'm using 0.5 as a rough estimate. So you would just throw in that extra factor there again, since the LEDs are not 100% efficient. I am not going to plug in numbers for all of these power and efficiency calculations in this video since it's already getting kind of long. And again, I walk through a detailed example problem for power and efficiency in one of the earlier videos linked in this playlist that you can find in the description of this one. The interesting thing for you to do now that you have hopefully watched this entire playlist is to design your own LED circuit for optimal efficiency. So you, if you have a circuit design with a desired number of LEDs, so you have a certain number of each type or color of LED that you want, you know the forward voltage drop and the current requirements for each of those LEDs, how do you then choose a power supply and choose the current limiting resistors to minimize power dissipated by the resistors, which is going to maximize the efficiency of the entire circuit? So since there's pretty much infinite possible combinations there, depending on the number and color of LEDs you want, I can't walk through all possible examples, but you should be able to use all of the videos in this playlist to help you do the calculations to design that circuit. We also have written instructions if you would like to do this for a science project 
on our website, which again, you can find linked in the description of this video.